Hey guys, this is the YouTube version uh, of my show. I don't love the idea of even putting it out like this, but I'm going to use YouTube to stay in touch with you guys from now on. That means this version is missing all the stories about coronavirus, insurrection, your Second Amendment rights, and more. All of these, of course, are usually my most honest, brutal, and important stories. Anyway, you can uh, get the entire unfiltered and uncensored show for free by going to thecomicsgym.com or nickdip.com. It's still free on both of these sites, too. Uh, and if you want extra content each day, join at patreon.com or thecomicsgym.com for the daily Encore show. Also, while you're uh, on these sites, please make a contribution to keep this show free and check out my tour dates. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, Raleigh, New York, and Texas in the up and coming months. Remember, uh, you guys keep thinking it, I'll keep saying it, and please enjoy and please share today's episode. Talk to you soon. I am so sick and tired of the liberal agenda that is destroying our country from our schools to our workplaces to our media. It's literally everywhere. Well, everywhere maybe, but not this show. Never. Here you get the truth, unfiltered and unapologetic. I don't care if I hurt feelings or if I take a position that isn't agreeable or if I step on somebody's toes. I call them the way I see them and then I put it out there for free. To keep this show free, I need your help. Please go to nickdip.com and make a contribution, or even better, subscribe at thecomicsgym.com or on Patreon today and get an extra encore show each day. Discounts are on merchandise and a whole lot more. Thank you guys so much for watching, sharing, and contributing to the best show, in my opinion, on the internet and the most honest. You guys make it happen. Hi. Hi. As Zook used to say sometimes, like a big girl, hi. Had his brother to my house, his older brother Peter, who's the most fascinating, I always call him the Dos Equis guy, because he's just, he's like a man of international intrigue. I think I've mentioned him on the show before. He'll call us like on a Wednesday. Where are you? I'm in Libya. What? <laughs> Next night he's a call from a cafe in Tel Aviv. <laughs> I go, what's he do? So it goes, I'd lost track a long time ago. I'm not even sure. Just a fucking brilliant dude. He was on 60 Minutes being questioned about the big dig in Boston. And I mean, he takes on these huge, like now he's rebuilding Buffalo, <laughs> all the infrastructure. And um, so, anyways, he came yesterday and um, he's, uh, he's just so friggin' smart. And, and just like Zuck, he's likable. Um, and God, I had a good two hour talk with him. So anyway, and his nephew, Zook's nephew, Andy, who's about 42 years old, who I've only met a couple times, stayed at our house because he had to go down to the, anyway, and he, another Zook, they, 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 they got that Russian smarts. He was going to be a doctor, but he got bored with it. He didn't, he saw how the health insurance companies were making medical decisions they shouldn't. So he's like, fuck this. I think I'll dabble in computers. You know, and you know this, Dallas, being a movie guy, uh, you people, I th and I might have explained, I don't know, they, when you shoot a film, you have something called dailies, so you can watch what you did that day, whatever the fuck, you know, Disney does this, all the big studios, and it's very important, and what happens is sometimes people hack the shit, if it's online, or whatever the fuck, and well, Andy, so it's enough, you came up with a way to prevent that, and, you know, Disney was courting him for it, and, I go, what the fuck? And to add on to that, after he got out of college, he was telling me he was out in Northern California working with some computer company, gets bored with it, but he, he plays electric guitar. So him and his buddy would fuck around, and they knew somebody in L.A. who 
hooked them up for a couple gigs on Sunset Strip, small places. So they did that for a couple. Next thing they get a following, they get their own night at the fucking Rainbow Room on Sunset Strip, which means you have a following. <laughs> and he said, we were just fucking around, and people were coming out in droves. So the second drummer for, I hope he doesn't mind, I'm spilling the beans here. The second drummer for Guns N' Roses offers them, like, the, the drummer started his own record label and wanted to sign Andy and this guy. <laughs> and Andy goes, I don't see myself doing this for the next. The drummer's like, are you fucking kidding me? Everybody on this street wants a deal I just saw. <laughs> what? I go, what are you, a renaissance man? I mean, Jesus Christ, some people make life look so easy, you know? Uh, you know, so now he's, uh, then he hired, uh, whatever, some computer company wanted to hire him, some menial job. He goes, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. It was like doing something, something with hard drives that sounded like I could do. And six months later, he's running the job. <laughs> it's that Zook, and, and, and Greg was different. He was smart, but in a different way, street smart. You know, and uh, anyways, it was fascinating to sit down with both those guys. And, God, we had just given Zook a, uh, an antique radio for his birthday. He gave me that football helmet. We gave him this beautiful, and, and, you know, Pete brought it back. It's so fucking sad, sitting in my fucking house. And uh, I watched UFC this weekend. He was always next to me watching UFC, you know, and I'm like, I just kept looking over at the fucking empty, you know, it's fucking, it's not even hitting home yet. You know, anyways, but you guys, I mentioned them so many times on the show. That's why I'm talking about it. Let's get to the, let's get to some happy news. Ukraine and dead children. What the fuck is going on? What's going on out there? Some interesting shit broke today. Am I doing this right? It's Monday. I feel like I'm yes, skipping something. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Obama, uh, did you hear about this? Obama's Ukraine coup, Maybe. Law enforcement, that's a publication today, Law Enforcement Today, recently reported on how the United States, under then-President Barack Obama, assisted in staging a coup in Ukraine, which destabilized the region and, in turn, provoked Russian President Vladimir Putin to invade and annex uh, Crimea. And I'm sorry, I wanted to preface all this, folks. Don't believe this is war and one of the best slogans I've ever heard. What's the first casualty of war? The truth. And don't believe what we're saying. I don't believe what Ukraine's saying half the time. I definitely don't believe what Putin's saying. Um, don't believe, take it all with a grain of fucking salt. But when you start bringing this fucker up, Captain Marxist, I'll take it. No. <laughs> Again, we don't know, but it's very interesting. Uh, anyways, yeah, so he was trying to pull a coup over there, apparently, back in the day. And um, so Putin would annex... Um, Crimea. Anyways. Who said that? I don't know. Who the fuck said that? Take it easy, Captain. Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toed cocksucker down here who just signed his own death war? Uh, now we're finding out that one of the key players in the coup, Victoria Newland. Well, who's that twat? Uh, she served in the State Department under Obama, was actually caught on tape planning the coup in Ukraine. Again, I'm taking all this with a grain of salt. I don't. You know, I, I'm so cynical now, I'm fucking useless. But that's they, they say that's how you should be during the war. <laughs> Newland is a voracious anti-Trumper, that's all you need to know, who is believed to have a great deal of involvement in spreading the so-called steel dossier that, sir, imagine now she's working under Biden, too, served as the basis for special counsel Robert Mueller's ill-fated probe of former President Donald Trump, so she's a useless. <laughs> you stupid fucking blabbermouth. Take it easy. Newland is currently serving in the Biden administration, also known as Obama's third term, this guy says, <laughs> under Secretary of State for Political Affairs. Newland recently testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and amazingly, nobody, including the stupid Republicans, questioned her about her past actions in Ukraine, which again tells you what? Everybody's in on this shit. It's all a big show. As GP reports, in 2014, Newland was a pretty busy lady in Ukraine being witnessed passing out cakes to protesters in Kiev, now Kiev, uh, just weeks after the protests became violent and a number of Ukrainian citizens died during the riots, which ensued. I had, I had heard of her a little bit. Who the fuck are you? But now right she's like, a, who the fuck are you? Right in the middle of this. 
And if you, some shit you can't believe, like she, she believed in the Steele dossier and helped push that, that you can verify, okay? Fucking woman Marxist Obama. <laughs> Nick, what do you mean? Well, I'm just saying. GP reports that during this time, Nolan had a telephone conversation with another American, Jeffrey Payette, to discuss the events in Ukraine. Payette currently serves as U.S. ambassador to Greece. However, between 2013 and 2016, he was serving as U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. During that phone call, Nolan Payette brought up two individuals, then the national security advisor to the vice president, Jake Sullivan, and the vice president himself, Joe Jerkoff Biden. The discussion between the two revolved around the State Department's pick for prime minister of a so-called unity government in Ukraine. Unity government. According to GP, Joe Biden was intimately involved in the decision. Gee, I wonder why. Since Obama had appointed him as the point man for Ukraine. <laughs> you, why would you... Obama knew what a fuck up he was. Maybe that's why Obama said when he was running, don't underestimate his ability to fuck up. Because I'm sure he helped fuck, fuck up this thing, right? You appointed him? What are you, friggin' nuts? So anyways, Obama appointed Biden, uh, you know, <laughs> point man over in Ukraine. I wonder why. Think you spent much time over there? What are we doing? Yeah. What's going on right now? Ironically, at about the same time, Biden's son, Hunter, was appointed to the board of Burisma Energy Holdings. One of the largest such, uh, such companies in Ukraine, despite having zero experience in the energy sector. So in essence, what occurred was that the former government of Ukraine was de deposed and the United States, with Biden at the helm, helped stage a coup and then picked the man they decided should lead Ukraine, not the duly elected head of government, which I think was Klitschko, wasn't it, back then? <laughs> in the late phone conversation between Newland and Pyatt, the former expressed frustration with the European Union's response to the situation then occurring in Ukraine. Following is what this broad, again, who hated Trump, is what she said about, you know, this is, has to do with the trying to put a commute. What did he? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Put a puppet government. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it. And, you know, f the EU. Fuck the EU, she says. So, I mean, if you listen to the whole thing, it's obvious what they're talking about. It's about five minutes long. I could spend the first hour on the. I wonder if this is going to be splashed all. I guarantee you, Tucker will probably have it on. Anyways. Never heard of the broad, did you? Up till now? Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> Then we have a video response here, too. Yeah, here's a video response to somebody asking her about that. Obviously not going to comment on private diplomatic conversations, uh, other than to say uh, it was pretty impressive tradecraft. The audio was uh, extremely clear. What the fuck does that mean? Is she, in, is she implying that somebody chopped it, edited it? No, I believe she's implying that uh, she's just trying. She's trying to make light of the situation. Oh yeah, it was really good tradecraft. That's all I'm going to say. And then what does she mean by tradecraft? Tradecraft meaning uh, whoever ended up leaking it uh, got clear audio. It's just a process. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, so that's what she focuses on, not the fact that she was involved in trying to put a puppet government in Ukraine. <laughs> you okay. That sounds like the deep state, by the way, which still exists. That's where, uh, until they clean house, I'm probably having a wet dream. Anyways, uh, let's go on to uh, story two, which sort of is related. Um, again, take all this shit with a grain of salt. I don't care who it's coming from, whatever side, because it is wartime. Uh, there was no ghost pilot killing Russians and... <laughs> And that old lady, remember yelling at the Russian soldier in that park? That didn't exist either. Or that was from a few years ago. So suck my dick, TV. What am I going to do? I'm going to start watching The Bachelor. <laughs> now, there's something you can trust. By the way, it's, uh, <laughs> I always say this to my listeners. I must laugh. I still like American Idol. Again, I watch it differently than most people. I, I, first of all, I've been on Hollywood auditions, and it's really fucking nerve-wracking. So it amazes me that this younger generation aren't even phased by it because of YouTube and 
They're so media savvy. A lot of them walk in, fucking, they don't give a shit, um, which blows me the fuck away. But again, I watch it. The other part is just make me fucking crazy how PC it is. The sob stories. They'll do a five minute sob story. Oh, then he lost his leg when he slipped in a puddle when he was two. And, but he sings like a bird and he's black and he grew up in Tuskegee. And what? So now I know the guy made it through. You're not going to do a 10 minute piece on him and then say, you suck. Anyways. <laughs> But I watch for the PC virtue signaling and, and how every time there's a good black singer, um, <laughs> what's it, Lionel Richie will hug the person. <laughs> Finally, he hugged a white kid last night. <laughs> right after I said it, I go, does he have a fucking, <laughs> but this black kid comes in, black kid, I mean, this white kid, I'm sorry, folks, I'm digressing here. I don't give a shit, it's my show. <laughs> this white kid comes in from Long Island, right? Leather jacket. Thick glasses, horrible acne, short hair, fat, dumpy. He's got like a white turtleneck with a gold chain outside like the brothers wear. <laughs> Just a fucking mess, Ripchy. And he goes, I'm going to do a Donnie, Donnie Hathaway song for you. This motherfucker. I, I watched it again. I have never heard a white guy sing like that. And guess what? Lionel gets up and fucking hugs him. Why? Because he sounded just like a brother. But before that kid, a 17-year-old girl comes in. I forget from even where. Oklahoma? I don't know. She made uh, Carrie Underwood look like a dog. This girl looks like Kim Basinger when she was 17. I'm, ta I'm talking a 14 on a scale. Freaky. And I'm like, there's no way she can sing. Be that big. Sits down at a piano and does an Adele tone. Standing ovation from the fuck. I, I go, hand her the trophy. This is American Idol. Personally, I'd give it to that fat guinea from uh, Long Island who was unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, there's long, I'm just saying, this girl was 17. We talk about American Idol, and if she doesn't win this thing, she's going to be a movie star. But she sang like a goddamn bird. Better than the fucking anybody who had come. <laughs> 17? Dallas. Let's kidnap the bitch. No, I just want to manage her, that's all. I'd like to manage her hair. What? <laughs> Make it soft and silky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, honest to God, supermodel looks, sings like a fucking, it, it, it's hilarious. I just feel bad for the, like, I don't know, 10 people who had already auditioned watching her go. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, folks. I still like the fucking show. Again, because I, I ruined it for my wife going, <laughs> here you go. Oh, black kid, uh, let me guess. He grew up in a trailer home with a white fat mother and here comes the story. And, and I'm usually right nine out of ten times. But they do put on a lot of hillbillies, too. Sob stories. Girl from West Virginia. Had teeth like a fucking horse who did meth. All twisted and shit. Fucking unbelievable voice. I, I find it fascinating. These kids, I, some of these kids haven't even sung in front of a live audience ever. I don't know how they can walk in. I, I remember auditioning, acting-wise. And shit in my pants. It's pretty... Anyways, that's what drugs are for, Nick. These kids are all on Xanax and Oxycom. Lead story. Ukraine and U.S. worked on bioweapons together. Boy, this is getting interesting. Again, folks, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know who's putting it out. The Russian media outlet, RIA Novosti, Novosti, put remote control back in docking station. That's the Russian and the Sopranos. <laughs> Polly, Polly picks it up. What the fuck's this? He goes, universal remote. Polly goes, yeah, I bet you guys are wiping your ass with your bare hands before you get over here. <laughs> and then he goes like this, lets it smash on the floor. <laughs> and the Russian's on the couch drinking. He goes, you want to fuck here now? <laughs> so he gets, and they, and they end up killing him. Anyways. The Russian media outlet, Aria Novosti, released documents uh, that the Ministry of Defense points to as evidence that the Ukraine was undertaking research in U.S.-funded biolabs that has the capability to be used for bioweapons. <laughs> really? The Russian Ministry of Information? Yeah, they wouldn't lie, would they? That's what I said to my boy Rich Wood, who actually was on a, cu a couple of late-breaking stories. But I, I, I just said to him, don't fucking believe any of it. Uh, Major General Igor Konishnikov, I think he won the uh, luge in China, 
An official representative of the Russian Ministry of Defense provided the information to journalists. Moscow said that the documents allegedly originated from employees of Ukrainian biological laboratories, sound familiar, confirmed that components of biological weapons were being developed in Ukraine in close proximity to Russian territory. Again, uh, sorry, propaganda, as reported by RIA Novosti, uh, remote control. Put back in the docking station. Yeah, fuck you. <coughs> mm, lung omelet. Wow, that one hurt. Fuck, and they still got me, those chinky bastards. I'm still, still suffering a tad of uh, whatever. In the course of a special military operation, the facts of an emergency cleansing by the Kiev regime of traces of military biological program being implemented in Ukraine, funded by who? The U.S. Department of Defense were uncovered, according to these lying. But I don't know. That guy could be a lesbian. Looks just like a girl. Anyways, that's what uh, Kanish Kozhenikov said. Uh, we have received, we have received documentation. <laughs> kind of funny names. <laughs> what, what, was, what was some of the names now? Um, Dragonfly. <laughs> Dragonfly something. Employees of Ukrainian biological laboratories on the emergency destruction of especially dangerous pathogens on February 24th, the causative agents of uh, plague, anthrax, tularemia, oh, I don't like that one, cholera, big deal, and other deadly diseases. Um, I don't fucking know. I don't know nothing about that. They, but they list, okay, I'm not, I, I, there was 10 what they supposedly found, like talking points, bullet points, of what was going to be done. If I read them to you, would be here for the next two and a half hours. <laughs> Just take my word for it, like I'm supposed to take their word for it. Uh, fact checkers, <laughs> this is when I know it was bull, bullshit. Fact, fact checkers Snopes, check my balls, have denied that there are bioweapons laboratories in Ukraine that are run by the United States. I don't know that Snopes ever gets anything right, but anyways. According to one fact check, a viral post on biolabs in Ukraine, the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, and the Department of Defense of the United States of America entered into an agreement in 2005 while Republican U.S. President George W. Bush was in office to stem the threat of bioterrorism by... Remember he got envelopes? Do you remember anthra That was all bullshit, it turned out. Depending, again, who you want to believe. But that was like a false flag on our part. Um, Biotism. By placing safeguards on deadly pathogens dating from a Soviet-era biological weapons program. According to... A, a contemporaneous news article in the Chicago Tribune. While the United States Defense Department's, this is way too heavy news today, I'm hating this show. While the U.S. Defense Department Biological uh, Threat Reduction Program provided some funding to upgrade biolabs in the Ukraine, these facilities are operated by the Ukrainian government under guidelines set under Ukrainian law. I don't know. find out what the hell happened. Yeah, I don't fucking believe us either. The main issue with such facts checkers is that they have dismissed any possibility. <laughs> this is Snopes, by the way. Just give you an idea how they think about it, their facts. Suck a dick and die. Anyways, here's Tom with the weather. <laughs> we got to get another, uh, we used to have a fucking another angle cam. You're good. You're a director. You could, right? Something to make a little interesting. I like to punch myself in the face right now. I'm so sick of myself. <laughs> Give me back my bullets. <sighs> Let's move on, shall we? Sending bullets abroad. Could you send some to my house? If the shit goes down, I have three. Don't get me wrong, I'm deadly. Scottsdale, Arizona-based Ammo Inc. is donating one million rounds of ammunition. Abort mission immediately. Donating one million rounds of ammunition to Ukraine's fighting forces. You gotta love it. <laughs> Don't you love you hear the shells hitting the floor? That's so American. 
MON CEO Fred Wangenhels. Exp really? Is there a John Smith running a company or a fucking Ted Nugent? Fred Wangelhals explained the decision by saying this. This is the Ammo Inc. warehouse in Wisconsin, where they mass produce what they call innovative ammunition for Oof. firearms. Now ready to help Ukraine battle the Russians one bullet at a time. I believe, first of all, in the Second Amendment. How about a necktie? I, I believe in yeah. <laughs> freedom and democracy. Fred Wagenhals is the CEO. He made his fortune in NASCAR before shifting Pause. gears to... How southern is this guy? I think. I don't even know if he's southern. Made his fortune in NASCAR. Now he's sending bullets overseas. Holy shit. As Brett Butler, the comedian, once said, he's so southern he's related to himself. <laughs> Kenny Rogers had a good one, too. No, it was Bill Hicks, actually. Bill Hicks, uh, kid comes up to you after my show and, and said, uh, Hi, Bill, this is my sister and my wife. And there was one person standing there. <laughs> okay, go ahead guns. Now he's pledging one million bullets to Ukraine free of charge, born out of a brief conversation between two Ammo Inc. execs. And he's going to use Amazon to get them out. <laughs> he just good for him. I wish I could help out, you know. I sent some unripe bananas. I don't know if they'll get there. <laughs> for the girls. He decided to send the one million rounds after talking to his former NASCAR colleague, the ghost of Richard Petty. What? No. I mean, Dale Earnhardt. Petty's still alive. Uh, colleague Richard Childress. No, Petty's dead too, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Wagon House has a private plane ready and waiting to make the delivery. As Guy's got a private plane. As soon as government clearance is received. Don't hold your breath from this faggot government. Right? It. No, that would be too dangerous, and it's not, it would help the outcome that we really don't want. I don't even know what we want over there. Remington is also sending a million rounds. Good for Remington. I have you shocked now. I love it. Rounds of ammunition to Ukraine's fighting forces, okay? Give it up for Remington. If that's a fact. It is. Tell me, am I lying? All right, you got to bring that shit over there personally, because I don't trust anybody. The renowned, and by the way, Gutfeld's uh, mother-in-law is safe and sound. Um, just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> the renowned ammunition manufacturer announced their plans via Twitter on Friday. I hope it gets there. I, you know, how about, how about friggin' you know who? Zelensky, avoiding like three hits on him already. I'm guessing that's true. I don't, again. This is how cynical I am. I'm laying in bed last night going, maybe Zelensky is just stirring up all this shit. He wants, he keeps asking for a no-fly zone that would drag us into this fucking thing. And I'm like, okay, where's he playing? What part? <laughs> I'm so fucking cynical. I'm like, holy shit, he could be working for Putin. The only guy that wasn't was Trump. Right, yeah, you just can't trust any of it. You can't, right? There's a bigger picture. Yeah, exactly. We talked about it on the show. But I said, uh, yeah, there's 12 people in a room deciding all this shit. But I'll play the game, left, right, whatever the fuck. I enjoy scrapping. I'm 60, I can't punch anymore, so I'll use my mouth. Anyways, let's move on to a fat black racist fag. How's that for a headline? I fucking, this guy, I would cut his throat if I fucking... A far left guest on The View sounded off on President Biden's State of the Union remarks pouring cold water on the defund the police movement saying Friday that Biden was admitting he didn't care about reform. Quote, let's not abandon our streets or choose between safety and equal justice, Biden said on Tuesday. We should all agree the answer is not to defund the police. And the only reason Biden is saying this, because now it's politically expedient, he didn't say shit when cities were being burned down, you fucking scumbag. You're not even good at lying. The answer is to fund the police. Fund them with resources and training they need to protect our communities. So Eli, or Ellie I call him, Miss Dell, ugh. Please give me call. There he is. Look at that fucking number two pencil. <laughs> Brillo padded girl. Um, Eli Mistel, a correspondent for The Nation, which is a publication that's left of 
Stalin, in frequent MSNBC guests, so you know he's trying to be fair. He fumed Biden was trying to be nice in his address and suggested cops on the streets would still be just as likely to kill African Americans for no reason. Let me stop you there, you fat girl. That's been disproven over a thousand times. More white guys get shot by cops unarmed last year, and uh, you're just full of shit. The numbers don't fucking lie. There's black people that will agree with me. So that's all been disproven. But the view, I don't even want to put stories on anymore from the <laughs> Tommy picked this one, and I was like, I, I don't want to give them any more ink. Joy Behar is just a lump of my testicle that needs to be removed. So is this bitch. Uh, as likely to kill African Americans for no reason. How about they're playing the music too loud? It's a joke. Relax. Regardless of funding. Uh, let's listen to this uh, he, she. Anybody in good faith think that the problem with police brutality in this country the is that country. the police are funded enough? No. Right? Do we think that there's a cop on the street saying, like, you know, I, I was going to let that black man live, but I just didn't have the funding and the training <laughs> to understand what humans look like. If only I had gotten a raise, that black man might have lived. Like, that's not what's happening, all right? <laughs> so when Biden says, fund the police, fund them, fund them, fund them, what I hear is, I don't care anymore, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb cut next. Yeah. Sonny Huston laughing like he's hilarious. Everybody fucking nodding. They're stuck in 1942, and uh, look at him. Isn't he handsome? You fat, nasty, black bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect for him. This is made for him. You fat, nasty, black bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think anybody... Uh, can you imagine? Does anybody buy that? And, and you book him on the show, view, really? Oh, it's fucking... He's not even relevant. He's saying shit that they were saying fucking a year ago that's been disproven. Even black people, mostly because they're affected when you cut police funding. And this jerk off, no, it's because white cops want to kill unarmed black men, which was a, a fucking lie from day one. Ay, ay, ay. Mistel said Tuesday Biden's comments were what whites want to, oh, there it comes out. Fucking, not only is he fag black, he's a racist. I suck cock. Uh, only black cock. I love it. Yummy, 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 Mistel yummy. Mistel said Friday Biden's remarks were not a politically courageous strategy, leading to co-host Anna Navarro, the dumbest whore on the planet, to respond that she felt Biden was simply responding to the misunderstood slogan. I don't even know what the fuck that. Have another donut, will you? <laughs> Get rid of the slogan so we can have an actual policy debate on reform and where to put the funding to our... We know where to put it, right in the cop's hands. Ass wipe. You're always talking about funding mental health respondents and having that be part of the police response. You know what? Make me a sandwich. Make me a fucking sandwich. And don't eat it on the way to the living room. <laughs> He's the president making the address about his policy. How is he going to do the whole speech about his slogans and not tell me what the actual policy... Well, geez, it's, it's so complicated. He wants to give the cops more money, not less. We're, what do I got to explain to you? We're going to fund the police so we can do this or that or the other thing. He doesn't say that. He just wanted the soundbite, fund the police, to get Republicans off his back. Yeah, because they're really in the way. They're slowing. Republicans are slowing them down. What, what world do they live? Look at this big girl. That fucking hair. Frederick Douglass. <laughs> du Bois, one of those. <laughs> I can't get this fucking cheese burnt off my roasting pan. Give me that guy. <laughs> Mistel cited a survey showing blacks with a 66% approval rating for Biden. What? Excuse me? I, I, again, just pure propaganda. I'm sure that's from the na a poll the nation took of all uh, fucking radical leftists. Where did you take it? Brown University, the cafeteria, which he called politically disastrous for Democrats. Wow, aren't you a detective? Democrats in the White House generally enjoy sky-high approval ratings from black voters. Maybe that was a misprint. It certainly wasn't politically smart for the black community. Co-host uh, Sonny, who, what's her claim to fame? Yeah! Thank you. 
Ugh, just nodding. Yeah, white, white people bad, black people good, gay people good, straight people bad. I'm just summing up the news for the last 40 years. <laughs> Mama didn't mean to make you cry. Uh, goo gobbling police chief fired. Oh my God, who's writing this horse shit? <laughs> a, a Florida police chief has been given the boot after an investigation found the engaged discriminatory promotion practices and remarked, this is what he said, that wall is too white when looking at pictures of the department's command staff. I'm gonna fucking smash his fucking face in. Do you remember who else said that, folks? I've done this, I had a bit in my stand-up about it. Um, Rachel Maddow, she was giving a speech at Rock of, I wanna say Rockefeller University, somewhere in Illinois. And she got there uh, the day before and she's looking at this picture of all famous alumni from that university, and it was all the old white guys. And she went, what's with all the white dudes on the wall? Next day when she gave the speech, they were taken down. I said, that's like walking, me walking into a Waffle House in Atlanta and looking in the employees of months. Why, why are they all black? And I'm fucking, you know, a white guy hitting how to make grits? What the fuck? Or walking into, you know, uh, uh, the Hall of Fame of fucking Motown. <laughs> the fuck is this? The Pistons? <laughs> Take down a fucking uh, name a musician, you know. <laughs> Miles Davis? Right. Put, right. Take him down. Put John Denver up. <laughs> Wait, the fucking what? It's too black and too male. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this, this um, gay fella, Larry Scaroto, which is a time for Scarotum, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. He actually looks straight, but we'll show, we'll show a picture otherwise. Larry Scaroto, who took over the Fort Lauderdale Police Department in August, was, I can't believe it, they actually fired a dude for being discriminatory and saying the wrong thing about white people? Somebody pinch me. Uh, department in August was fired, <coughs> excuse me, uh, was fired by the city manager on Thursday, according to a press release. The report followed several discrimination complaints that alleged Scroto, 48, made hiring and promotion decisions with an illegal race-based approach. Bye -bye, dickhead. No doubt about it. My, again, I hate to reference my late great buddy, but he watched people blow by him, Samoan women, uh, Cuban women, who'd been there about three years, he'd been there for like 15, and just get promoted based on gender and race, and that's why the country's the shithole it is. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Not, I'm not saying they're not all. Obviously, there's qualified. There's black guys that, who got stepped over by black women or whatever, you know? Scaretto, a former assistant chief in Pittsburgh, became the first openly gay chief. Wow, that's, that's, that's terrific. Look, oh, there's the smile that says, yes, I like cock. <laughs> That's a pretty smile. He looks like if the, if the Sesame Street, the Muppets had a gay character. He's got that Muppet hair, though. And with that gleam in his eyes. He's got that gleam in his eyes. Right now he's looking at a Cub Scout changing <laughs> through his window. First openly gay chief hired in Fort Lauderdale, Asia. He's, and he's of mixed race. How are you not going to hire him? Huh? We can kill three birds with one stone. <laughs> Fucking quiz. Take it easy, Polly. Relax. Be tolerant. A 12-page investigation into the biased companies concluded that Scaroto created a divisive atmosphere in the department and that he once pointed to a conference room wall of photos of the department's command staff and declared that wall is too white. And I'm going to change that, according to CNN. In another incident, the investigation found that Scaroto said, which one is blacker when considering a promotion? Uh, an incident the former police chief denies took place. <laughs> the report quoted Scarotto, who headed the police department for just six months because his PC stupid woke fucking attitude thinks everybody's on board with it. You know what state you're living in? This is actually encouraging, as saying he intended to consider diversity at every opportunity, and then he said this. Oh, squeal, squeal.
Bye bye, dickhead. Bye bye, dickhead. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you so much, boys and girls. Uh, hey, I'm back on the road. Uh, you can find all these tour dates and ticket links on my website at nickdip.com. March 25th, Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas. The next night, the 26th, Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth. April 7th through 9th, Comics at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. May, May 6th. The goddamn Y is a 7. May 6th, Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown. May 7th, the next night, the Paramount Theater in Peekskill, New York. September 9th, Soul Joe's Comedy Club in Royersford, Pennsylvania. That was one of my favorite new ones. September 10th, Algonquin Theater in Manasquan, New Jersey. And September 11th, Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center in Chester, New York. Again, you can get all the links for tickets at nickdip.com and click on the tour button. Um, anyways, finally tonight on Face the Nation. <laughs> squeal, squeal. <laughs> A right wing Brazilian politician, disgustingly. I love how they have to add, you don't have to, I'll decide what he, whether it's disgusting or not what he said. Oh, you never hear left wing. No, that's a, it's always a conservative uh, speaker, never a liberal speaker, because they're all liberals. A right wing Brazilian politician disgustingly described fleeing Ukrainian women as easy and total goddesses. Holy shit, that was sexist. No. <laughs> what do you mean? He complimented them. The easy part? What's that, a slight? <laughs> During a recent trip to the war ravaged uh, nation, he, he said that, and uh, I don't know. No. Never no, been no, there. No, 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 no. He did. No. no. Sao Paulo Congressman Arthur Duval, 35, made the bow comments while he was supposed to be on a diplomatic mission uh, last week to witness the devastation of the war firsthand and raise awareness of the plight of Ukrainians, but he made it a pussy hunt trip. Uh, but Duval sparked outrage after Brazilian media leaked secret recordings of him discussing the trip in such crude terms that he had to suspend his campaign to be a Sao Paulo governor. He says, I've just crossed the border on foot between Ukraine and Slovakia, and he's talking to his friend. Bro, I swear to you, I've never seen anything like it in terms of beautiful girls. The refugee uh, line, Q means line, basically. Uh, it's like 200 meters long or more, of just, or more of just total goddesses, he said. According to the, only you can send the guy to a war zone in there. It's some incredible shit. The line outside Brazil's best nightclub doesn't come close to the refugee line here. Oh, my God. This guy's a real pussy, huh? The outlet said Duval also called Ukrainian women easy because they're poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's probably hitting it right on the head. I don't know. And then uh, the woman said this. About the thousand other fucking pigs you had your dick in over the years. The strippers, the cocktail waitresses. Were you best friends with all of them, too? <laughs> what a great show. Why? More people should watch. Brazilian media reported that he made degrading remarks about security guards. Can you imagine this is what we're worried about when babies are being killed and women being raped and shit? Well, Nick, this type of attitude leads to it. No, it don't. I would have said the same thing. I would have been nice about it. Sounds nicer in Italian. Degrading remarks about security guards at the border of Ukraine and Slovakia, too, and said, just unbelievable, dude. As soon as this war's over, I'm coming back. <laughs> the wife of Ukraine's former ambassador to Brazil condemned the politician and said, show some respect, you punk. Duval blamed a lack of... <laughs> Listen, now here's the excuse that really makes him look like, why don't you just be a man and go, you know what, I was probably wrong, um, but I can't help it. I'm a guy. You got, you women say we're pigs and dumb. Okay, you're right. Why are you surprised at that? Duval blamed the lack of water and, ac yeah, it's dehydration that gave you the heart. Lack of water and access to shower. <laughs> Anytime I get a smelly ass, I want to jump on a girl. 
Shiloh for his words saying he became overexcited and talked nonsense. <laughs> oh, dude, you fucked up, okay? You're, you're on deep chin now. All right, uh, that is it. But that's the world we live in. Somebody said something sexist in a war zone. I don't know what to believe anymore. I got to believe there was a woman reporter going, God, these soldiers are hunks. Wait a minute, what am I saying? Everybody, every broad on the internet was saying Zelensky, they wanted him. Yeah, he's a stud. If he was working at the city dump, you wouldn't even know what the fuck. I get it. He was a comedian. Now he shows he's got huge... By the way, don't ever underestimate, underestimate stand-up comics, which is what he was in a comedic actor. Anyhow. You know who was a war hero? Do you remember Buffy from uh, Family Affair? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Was Buffy the girl? I think so. Jody? I don't give a fuck. Why am I referencing a show from 1856? To end this one. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget the comicsgym.com. You can sign up there uh, to become a monthly subscriber and patreon.com and uh, nickdip.com for my tour dates and merchandise and cameo.com. I had a couple this weekend. I really love doing them um, where I can roast a friend. Or a, doesn't have to be a roast, but you know, I'm just going to be funny, which is equals a roast. It's, it's only a minute or two minutes. Um, go to cameo.com and I'll tell you how to do it. That is it. You think it. I will say it. You're very welcome. See you back here for uh, tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. <laughs>